Good morning. And what an incredibly exciting morning this one happens to be. It has been so much fun seeing all of you gradually make your way to campus, connecting and reconnecting with one another, and bringing this place, your school, to life for the purpose it serves, educating all of you in and out of classrooms and in ways that help us stay in hot pursuit of our school's mission, seeking to provide the most meaningful educational experience you will have in your life. That's no small undertaking. And it is fun to be on the verge of getting after that lofty pursuit together. So while I might not always look like someone who is teeming with enthusiasm, <laughs> trust me, this is me ready to go. As we begin Brooks School's 96th year here in Ashburn Chapel, named for Frank D. Ashburn, the school's founding headmaster, who served the school in that role for 46 years, and whose photograph and portrait hang in the entryway to this space, we do so on our 270-acre campus that provides us this exquisite and special setting upon which to live and learn together. As the current caretakers of this beautiful place, and in a spirit of remembering, our land acknowledgement is especially important on this day. Namely, at Brooks School, we live and learn on land once of the Penacook people, and we acknowledge their enduring presence. Our school first opened its doors 95 years ago next month, in October, because of a construction delay, which sounds a bit familiar. Yet I would suggest that most of the similarities end there. There were just 14 students that October morning, all boys, and all of them in either the first or second form, or seventh or eighth grade. There were three faculty members and just one dormitory. There was absolutely no soft serve ice cream, no cell phones, no internet. And the most common form of communicating to anyone off campus was something called writing a letter. I can describe what that involves at a later date. We begin today, 95 years later, now a school of 353 students and 84 faculty members, 10 dormitories, scores of exceptional facilities and spaces in and out of doors, and more diversity and lived experience than I suspect Mr. Ashburn ever imagined could be within reach. And we have a fully usually fully operational soft serve ice cream machine that works beautifully, I'm told, when it doesn't rain. That's a story for another day. We have not started a school year together in this space for three years. Two years ago, we were all on a screen. Last year, we were on the lawn. And today, we are here in what I would suggest is the heart and center of the school, a distinct space that brings us together twice every week in community around a message that someone or some group shares. When I think about our school's mission and where and how we realize meaning, time spent here overflows with possibility. I also realize that many, most, or maybe all of us have more swirling in our minds this morning as the school year begins than will be the case on any other day of the year. There's so much in front of us once we exit at the end of today's service and all kinds of questions about how it will go. In many ways, we are a different sort of new school today, perhaps not as new as the school was in the fall of 1927 when it was first getting off the ground, but certainly new by virtue of who we are and how we have navigated our way through the past three years. I noted in our opening faculty meetings last week that about half of the school's faculty members have started at Brooks in the past three years, including 17 new members of the faculty who are starting today with 113 of you who are new students. There is both great opportunity for those of us who have been here for a longer stretch of time to learn from this new and newer perspective and Great opportunity for those finding their way to draw from the experience and wisdom of those 
with more Brooks school years under their belts. I am a believer that great schools, a category I would put our school in unequivocally, find their way forward into better practices and deeper realization of mission by doing two challenging things at once, by appreciating and honoring where we are coming from and those who have occupied these pews and spaces all over campus before us, and by facing the fact that we've not always been what we want to be, that there is always room and need for improvement, that previous practices, while primarily well-meaning, have not always worked in ways we hoped they would. We have a need, as all great schools do, for continuity, for sameness, for shared and cherished experiences that span the Brooks School generations. Time spent in this space, opened in 1930, is such an experience. We also have a need for change, for continuing, for furthering our school in ways that equip it to more fully realize our mission with who we are today and the dynamic world we live in squarely in mind. All of you who are beginning today and those of us who are continuing today are part of a larger venture closing in on 100 years of existence that thousands of people who have come before us care deeply about. It's not always easy to see and feel what I'm trying to highlight, but if we think for a moment about the fact that everything we have at Brooks School was given to us, was shared with us, was developed for and by us, that's not for effect, by the way, you might begin to feel a bit more deeply how special this privilege of beginning a new school year with new and returning community members alike really is. We are the authors of this next chapter in our school's life and remembering where we are coming from as we boldly point ourselves driven by mission in new and important directions is important. This is a substantial challenge and incredible opportunity all at once, and it is ours. So as we lean into this year, I would offer the following as food for thought as we start, intent on doing well as we take on challenges and turn opportunities into accomplishments as we go. Be kind to others and to yourself. Acts of kindness go a long way. Be selfless when thinking about your own place within the larger community you are a part of. The whole is bigger than the individual parts. Be open to collaboration and opportunities to think with and draw from others. You will be amazed at what you will learn along the way. Do your part to ensure that all in our community can realize a sense of belonging every member of this community deserves we can't feel and experience belonging without others caring that we do. Be quick to thank those who enrich your Brooks experience at, in ways large, small, and in between. None of us make our way on our own. Be equally quick to apologize when you stumble or make a mistake or cause some harm. This will happen, and who we are in those moments says a lot about us. Try to be inclined to extend grace and forgiveness at all times, sometimes easier said than done. But it is better than holding on to resentment. Practice humility and modesty. Avoid arrogance. Don't compromise your integrity. Be who you are. And appreciate that each of us are in some way responsible for the experience that we all have here together. As Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, and I quote, no person has learned to live until they can rise above the narrow confines of their individualistic concerns to the broader concerns of all humanity. In order to live creatively and meaningfully, our self-concern must be wedded to other concern. Perhaps it is a function of having been here for a long time now but I find myself feeling both excitement and confidence on this day when thinking about all that awaits us. This is due in some part, I suppose, to knowing through experience that we will forge close relationships. We will feel communal joy. We will triumph in all kinds of ways. 
and we will have meaningful, memorable experiences together all year long. Some we know are coming and some that we cannot predict. My excitement about all of this is off the charts. I also know we will struggle at times, experience setbacks, feel disappointment, and need to pick ourselves up, examine where we are, and continue together better for what we've learned. My confidence about our resolve in these moments is as high as it has ever been. On the one hand, we are starting a discreet and unique Brooks School year. We have never been who we are today before, and we will never be who we are today again. In this sense, all that we start today will end in early June when the last EOL is assessed and the final comment is written. On the other hand, and in a different sense, what we are embarking on today is not about finishing or completing anything. Instead, it is about continuing, about furthering, about learning, about advancing, about moving in a direction that helps ourselves and our school become better versions of who we are. To pour ourselves into the present in ways that strengthen the future is what I hope we achieve together. With all of this in mind, I'm gonna close with a passage from The Irony of American History, written by American theologian Reinhold Niebuhr. I've not read the whole book, published in 1952, and I gather it is his reflection on the meaning of the United States' past to that point. I found the passage in a book of poetry I have in my office, and it felt like a good fit with what I have been aiming for this morning. Niebuhr wrote, nothing that is worth doing can be achieved in our lifetime. Therefore, we must be saved by hope. Nothing which is true or beautiful or good makes complete sense in any immediate context of history. Therefore, we must be saved by faith. Nothing we do, however virtuous, can be accomplished alone. Therefore, we are saved by love. I feel deeply fortunate to be beginning with all of you today. Have a great start, and let's have a great year. Thank you.